Hello there. Thank you so much for joining me for this IELTS academic writing preparation video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the advantages and disadvantages essay. Now you might be thinking that this seems like a very clear cut and simple essay to write. After all, you have advantages and disadvantages. But I'm going to show you that you'll need to pay extra attention to this tricky essay type because there's actually more than meets the eye with advantages and disadvantages. So in this lesson, I'm going to go through the various types of writing prompts you might find for this essay. And I'll teach you how to make a great outline with outline notes, and then we'll actually write a passage together so you can see my process and how I think through things. Okay, so without further ado, let's just talk a little bit about the scoring. Now the scoring is the same for all essay types. Remember, there are six essay types in the IELTS writing academic exam, but I'm going to show you how the scoring will play out for the advantages and disadvantages essay. First off, you'll need to focus on your task achievement, and this is probably the most important part and perhaps the most difficult part for the advantages and disadvantages essay. Basically, there are three different types of writing prompts that you might see on test day. I will go through these with you in just a minute, but you'll need to understand how many advantages, how many disadvantages you'll need to write about, and if you'll have to include your opinion. So a lot of students will forget to write their opinion if it's called for, or some students might not have time uh, because they didn't plan well or because they didn't plan an outline. So there are various parts that you'll have to include in this essay, and I'm going to teach you how to understand which ones you have to include. In any case, the task achievement will judge your ability to fully develop your answer and answer the question in your writing prompt. The second point is coherence and cohesion. Now, this section is concerned with your argument. Is it logical? Is it well thought out? Is it presented completely and in an organized manner? This is where the outline will really come into play and you'll make sure that everything is clear for your examiner. The last two points, the lexical resource and the grammatical range and accuracy are really all about your outside knowledge and your preparation in terms of reading, vocabulary, and grammar. So for lexical resource, you'll have to make sure that your essay is virtually error-free and that you used a wide range of vocabulary in a natural and formal way. So it's not asking you to include at least 20 phrasal verbs, for example. It's just asking you to formulate a response with language that is advanced and appropriate for the essay. The same thing goes for the grammatical range. They're not expecting you to use all past perfect because that just wouldn't make sense and it wouldn't make for a readable essay. Just use the grammatical forms that are relevant and that are appropriate for your writing. So just keep this in mind as we go forward because you'll see how the outline and the writing all play into the scoring. So now this is just a brief guide that you can use for the advantages and disadvantages essay. Now, when you see your prompt, the first thing you're going to do is read and understand what is written for your prompt. So you can do this by underlining keywords and really analyzing what you have to write about. I'll take you here in a few minutes and we can do this together, but you'll have to ask yourself a couple of questions like how familiar you are with the topic and whether or not you'll need to include your opinion in this essay. Once you've done that, you can plan your outline. And I'm going to show you three different outlines that you can choose from for the advantages and disadvantages essay. It's all dependent on the writing prompt you have. But once you plan your outline, you can make some notes, and this will help spark your memory for any ideas or any words or things you want to include in your essay. In general, for this, these three steps might seem like a lot, but they should take you no more than five minutes. So don't worry, with a lot of practice, this will all come naturally to you. Now, this is the first type of outline. I'll call it outline A. And let's just go ahead and read the question. In some countries, young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies. 
discuss the advantages and disadvantages for young people who decide to do this. Okay, so this is quite clear. In fact, this is the most basic advantage and disadvantage essay type. If you get this on test day, be aware that this is considered the easiest to write about because you just have to write about advantages and disadvantages. It's neutral, you're just stating the options. So you would start with an introduction in your first paragraph. Your second paragraph would have advantages one and two. Your third paragraph would have disadvantages one and two. And I've put one and two because you see that these are plural. So advantages and disadvantages. If you just write one advantage and one disadvantage, you're not fully adhering to the task and it isn't as developed as it could be. Additionally, if you have one advantage and one disadvantage, you might find it difficult to hit your 250 word minimum. So just keep in mind that with this question type, you're just talking about advantages and disadvantages. You don't have to state your opinion and you don't have to state which side is stronger. This is very important. Outline B is a bit different. Now I'm just asking this question in a different way. So this is the same theme that we saw in outline A. Let's go ahead and read it. In some countries, young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies. Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages for young people who decide to do this? All right, now this is also what we're going to be doing today. It's considered one of the most complicated and also one of the most unique types of questions in general in the writing exam because you are giving your opinion by stating which side is stronger and which side is weaker, but you don't have a designated opinion space. This is one of the more common advantages and disadvantages writing prompts, so be aware of that. Your outline will basically look like this. You'll have an introduction, a stronger side in your second paragraph, a weaker side in your third paragraph, and your conclusion will come last. So this question is not asking you to simply list off the advantages and disadvantages like outline A. In this case, you really have to make a decision on how you want to approach this writing prompt. If you find that it's easier to write about the advantages outweighing the disadvantages, go ahead and go down that road. In general, I would suggest that you stick with what you find to be the easier option. So your opinions are included here, but outline C is really the opinion type of essay because you have a space in a paragraph that is designated for your opinion. Let's go ahead and read the prompt. Many young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages and give your own opinion. So it's very clear. It will tell you to give your opinion and you'll know to designate an area for that. This outline will look like this. You'll have an introduction, your two advantages in the second paragraph, your two disadvantages in the third paragraph, your opinion in the fourth paragraph, and then a conclusion. So note that outline C has five paragraphs, whereas the others have four paragraphs. This is very similar to an opinion essay. It sort of combines the two, actually. This is a nice combination between opinion essay and advantages and disadvantages. So study these different outlines, look at the keywords in your writing prompts, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so here we are with our question. Now first we're just going to read and understand. I'm going to read through it once and then I'm going to underline key words. With practice, you can combine these two steps. So you can read and underline keywords at the same time. Afterwards, we're going to think about these three questions, A, B, and C. Let's see if you can figure out which type of question this is. Some experts believe that it is better for children to begin learning a foreign language at primary school rather than secondary school. Do the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages? Okay, let's read it again. I'm going to highlight key words. So, some experts believe that it is better, I'm going to go ahead and underline this, 
for children, now this is our subject, so I'm going to underline that, to begin learning a foreign language. And this is important because it talks about the subject that we're going to be thinking about. So foreign language at primary school rather than secondary school. So these are the two varying points of the question. And of course, do the advantages outweigh, very important word, the disadvantages? Okay, so what type of essay will I need to write? This is very clearly an advantages and disadvantages essay. However, keep in mind that we've just looked at the three different question types and the three different outlines. So I'm going to say that this is outline B because the question is, do the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages? So I know that I'm going to have to talk about a stronger side and a weaker side. B, how familiar am I with this topic? This will depend on you. This will depend on the test taker. The keywords will help you assess your knowledge on the topic. If you are not familiar with this topic, I would try my best to use creative thinking and really rely on your outline and plan before you put that pen to your test booklet. Because if you really don't know anything about this topic and you just begin writing, you are setting yourself up for disaster. It's worth it to put a few minutes into thinking and planning. Lastly, you have question C. How many advantages and disadvantages do I need to write about? And remember, you want to write about more than one, so a good number is around two advantages and two disadvantages. And in this specific case, you'll need to think about which option is the stronger side. So are the advantages stronger or are the disadvantages stronger? If you don't have an opinion on this, you'll want to argue that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages just because that's probably the easiest route to go into. If you're very passionate about the topic and you believe that the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, go ahead with that. But if I am really not sure about the topic and I don't really have an opinion, I would stick with advantages outweighing the disadvantages. It's always easier to argue for an advantage. Okay, so I've gone ahead and written out the outline that we saw from our outline B slide earlier. And I've written our headings in red, so the introduction, the stronger side, the weaker side, and the conclusion. I have also written the various sentences that we will use in each paragraph. So first off in the introduction, it should be about two to three sentences. You'll have your rewritten question. So basically we're going to rewrite what we see here with synonyms. And this will show the examiner that you're able to effectively open your essay and that you also have synonyms to restate what is written. This shows your range of vocabulary. And then, since there is a bit of opinion included in this question, since we have to argue for something, we're going to write a thesis statement. Now, you might remember this from school. I hope you enjoyed writing in school because we're going to call upon our knowledge of writing thesis statements. If you don't remember, that's fine. I'm going to instruct you through it on the right hand side in just a moment. Then our second paragraph will talk about the stronger side. Now we're going to go ahead and argue for the advantages. So we are going to argue that children should begin learning a foreign language at primary school because the advantages of that outweigh the disadvantages. So I'm going to think of a topic sentence just to introduce the paragraph. I'm going to provide an explanation of the stronger side with an example, and then a second explanation of the stronger side with another example. These are basically my two advantages. I'm going to explain the advantage and then give an example twice. Then we're going to do the same thing, but for the weaker side. So the topic sentence, and we're going to include our disadvantages here, which will be the weaker side, with explanations and examples. And then we will close with a conclusion. Now we're going to summarize the main points and then restate our position. Restating the position is connected to the thesis statement. 
This shows that you are clear about what you were arguing and how everything flows together. Notice how your introduction and your conclusion will be shorter. I have two to four sentences here in the conclusion because it depends on the points that you write. You might take two sentences to summarize the main points, but we'll look at that together. Okay, before we start writing, I'm just going to make the outline notes. So this is the third step in our guide. And I'm going to start with the introduction. Remember, your outline does not have to have perfect grammar. It doesn't have to have all the vocabulary you're going to use. This is just something that you can write off in the margin and refer to as you're writing so that you don't lose track of what you want to say. So let's start with A, the rewritten question. Uh, I'm basically going to make some notes and say, some people believe studying foreign languages earlier is better. Now, this is just a way to restate what is stated here. I'm going to elaborate more on this in our actual text, but for now, I'm just going to say this. So our thesis statement now is going to be what we are going to argue. And since I'm going to state that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, I'm basically going to say better to introduce foreign languages sooner. So I'm going to call upon primary school rather than secondary school. But this thesis statement is basically what everything in the passage is going to support. So keep that in mind. Now for the stronger side, I'm going to focus on the advantages. And my topic sentence is going to be something general that will introduce the paragraph. And my first explanation, so my first advantage, I'm going to talk about how children are able to absorb languages better when they are younger. And this is why we'll talk about primary school, okay? And as an example, I'm going to say, that children's brains are programmed and it's better to learn another language in primary school when they are young. So notice how I'm using abbreviations here. I'm going to, of course, elaborate more on this in our writing on the right-hand side. The second advantage that I'm going to call upon is more flexibility in scheduling. So for example, it is easier to fit language learning into the schedule because students learn by playing in primary school. And so it's easy to learn a language by playing and it's actually better for the students because they'll be able to absorb the information. Now, personally, I'm a teacher, so I have this information at the ready in my mind because I've studied this and I know that you know it's an effective way to learn languages. Your outline might look a bit different and that's fine as long as you support your advantages and you show how they outweigh the weaker side, you will be fine. So now for the weaker side, for my disadvantages, I'm going to call upon the first explanation of perhaps um, inadequate teaching. And I'm going to say that this could be present in primary schools. So as an example, I could say, teachers may not be qualified to teach languages at the primary school level. So perhaps they are more qualified to teach math and reading, spelling, basic subjects. This is just a thought. And the second explanation, I'll say that perhaps there could be difficult policy for continuing studies. What I mean by this as an example is that schools may have difficulty bridging the gap. This is a good phrase and perhaps something that I want to include in the passage. Bridging the gap between primary school and secondary school. Okay, so what I'm thinking about here is lack of policy, lack of funding perhaps to instill language learning in primary school and to continue it into secondary school. These are just some thoughts. Now, my disadvantages are the weaker side, so I'm arguing that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. So knowing that, I'm going to put a couple of asterisks here because I'm going to end this paragraph by saying something like, despite these disadvantages, the advantages outweigh them because of, with my various reasons. So I'm going to 
provide some sort of linking statement that will flow nicely into my conclusion. I'll show you what I mean by that when we start writing. For the conclusion, um, just to summarize, I'm going to say there are both advantages and disadvantages for the following reasons. And I'm going to list my reasons just to recap everything I've talked about. And then I'm going to restate my position and say, basically, although there are drawbacks, okay, another synonym for disadvantages, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, okay? This is basically my idea. See how the stronger side will discuss the mental capacity and the flexibility and schedules in primary schools. The disadvantages will talk about potential weaknesses in school policy and also potential weaknesses in teaching. This is just something that I had to think up to make my essay complete. All right, so without further ado, let's start writing. All right, so I'm going to start and I'll say something like traditionally, children have studied foreign languages at later stages in their educational careers. Now, this is not necessarily included in the passage or in the writing prompt, but it's something that I am familiar with and it's something I'm going to use to introduce the topic. I'm basically going to include the rewritten question right here and I'll say, but some believe that it could be beneficial to introduce foreign languages earlier. And that is basically what I've said here. The fact that the writing prompt says rather than secondary school it implies that children learn foreign languages in secondary school. So that, based on my outside knowledge, has led me to write this opening sentence. Now, for my thesis statement, I'm going to put that in bold because that is what we'll need to reference and support throughout our writing. And I'm going to say, while there are both advantages and disadvantages associated with this topic, the positive aspects, so the advantages, take precedence over the drawbacks. And this is great because I've used various synonyms. I haven't always relied on advantages and disadvantages. I've talked about what is positive and also drawbacks, which is another great way to say disadvantages. So I'm saying that while they both exist, my two points, the positive outweigh the disadvantages. All right, let's start with our stronger side. I'll keep our topic sentence in bold. And I'm basically going to say that young children are better able to learn languages for a variety of factors. So this is my argument again, and a variety of factors are what I'm going to explain right now. So this topic sentence just opens and sets the scene for the paragraph. So I'm going to say, first off, studies show that young children pick up languages better than teenagers. This is something that I'm familiar with. I remember coming across a study that discussed this. I don't need to talk about the title or the authors or anything like that. The essays are not going to be fact-checked necessarily, but just make sure you know what you're talking about. So this is my first explanation. As my example, I'm going to say the younger brains are, the more they are able to retain information in the long term, okay? Uh, I'm also going to say it has also been proven that young brains absorb material at a faster rate. Now, I've separated these two sentences. These are actually both my examples. I just think for clarity, it's best to separate these two sentences. So remember, I have four to five sentences for this paragraph. I'm probably going to have around five sentences, which is fine. It's better to separate two sentences if it makes more sense and it makes your writing clearer. And now I'm going to go into my second explanation. So more flexibility and schedule. It's my second point. So I'm going to say, additionally, 
implementing language lessons in primary schools would allow for more flexibility within the school system. And now as an example, I'm going to say younger children will be able to engage with the material more frequently through shorter sessions, thus maintaining their enthusiasm and progress. And though this is how I have talked about learning by playing, easier to fit into the schedule. I haven't necessarily used this phrase, learn by playing. It's just something that sparked my memory and something that I thought of in the outline stage. So don't be afraid to use different phrases or different words as you're writing as it comes to you. So that is my second paragraph. It's my stronger side. I've got my two explanations, my two examples. I think we're good to go. Let's continue for the weaker side. And now, since I'm introducing something that is contrary to what I've written here, I'm going to start my topic sentence with however. It introduces a contrasting point. So, however, there are some disadvantages when it comes to learning languages at an earlier age. All right, so I've set the scene. I know I'm going to be talking about disadvantages. Let's talk a little bit about the inadequate teaching. I'll say primary teachers, or if you want, you could say primary school teachers. So in this case, uh, imagine that I've actually written this in my test booklet. Instead of scribbling out messily, I'm going to strike through just like you've seen here. You just do a simple strike through and then you continue writing next to it. So I'll say primary school teachers, good, may not be qualified to provide lessons in foreign languages, resulting in inadequate teaching. For my example here, I'm going to say something along the lines of teaching, but I actually just thought of an idea and I'm going to write it here. I'm going to say, this could demotivate younger students and give them a negative experience in language learning. This is something that kind of just came to me as I was writing and I was able to fit it in because if you see here, my initial example for the explanation was quite similar to the explanation. So I'm just going to make a note here that I talked about potential demotivation among students, okay, something like this. And this is fine, it happens in the writing process. If you find that something makes more sense, go ahead and put it in within reason. You don't want to stray too much from your outline. Let's continue on with our second explanation. I can say further, again, I want to use this nice connective because it's my second point. Further, school districts may not be able to carry on uh, foreign language teaching from primary to secondary schools. And I'm going to talk here about the example. In this case, students would not only lose their progress, but they would also be demotivated. So I'm talking about demotivation again due to the lack of consistency throughout their educational careers. Now, notice that I haven't really used this phrase, bridging the gap, just because the more I think about it, my writing is formal in tone, and I don't want to necessarily include bridging the gap, also because I've done well without using it. Basically, the idea is still the same. The lack of consistency is another way to say that they'll have difficulty bridging the gap. So I am satisfied with this. Now, remember my asterisks here. I'm going to spin this a bit and provide a way that it will flow nicely into the conclusion. So I'm going to say, despite this, because I'm introducing a contradictory topic, these issues can be effectively addressed through consistent support in the school district and pose only a minor threat to the advantages. Okay, now if you look at this and if you're really keeping score here, this paragraph is six sentences, even though here I have four to five sentences. 
That is fine within reason because my conclusion will most likely be a bit shorter since I have included this sentence here. This sentence is introducing the conclusion. It's not necessarily in line with the weaker side. So if your conclusion is a bit shorter, it will make up for this length. And of course, later we'll look at the word count. It's probably not going to be that big of an issue. For the conclusion, I'm going to summarize both of my points. I'll put it in bold. And again, I'm just going to say, although there are a few disadvantages regarding the study of a foreign language during primary school, there are a plethora of advantages that outweigh the negative aspects. Again, this is very similar to my thesis statement, okay? In fact, it's basically rewritten in a different way. And you don't want to rewrite your thesis statement necessarily. You just wanna say it in a different way so that it shows the examiner that you are on track with the writing, that you're able to express yourself in different ways, and it is organized. And now I'm just going to restate my position again. I'm going to say young, children's innate abilities should be appreciated and fostered to their full advantage. Okay, so you also notice how A and B are present in my first sentence really. And my first sentence is quite abundant because it includes the advantages, the disadvantages, the drawbacks, the advantages outweighing the drawbacks. And so this last sentence really just sums it up and states again, that young children's abilities should be fostered, thus foreign language should be studied at primary school. So you'll notice that I had this outline. My passage is basically going off of the outline, but I also added in some ideas as I was writing. And don't be afraid about that. If you have your outline, you are better prepared to write, but as you write, you might think of some new vocabulary words and some new ways to go about everything. Now I'm just going to check the word count and the word count is at 293 words. This is pretty much the limit that you want to be at. You don't want to go too much above this because your minimum is 250. And since this question type requires you to add your opinion throughout your description of the stronger and weaker side, it isn't uncommon to have a higher word count for this specific question type. So don't worry, just make sure that you are not adding in unnecessary words. If you're really passionate about a topic, like I am passionate about this topic, you might find yourself wanting to write more, but just make sure that you stick to the task at hand. And that's definitely what we've done. We've talked about the stronger side, the weaker side, and how the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Great job. Notice how we used the modals. So we have may not or could demotivate, would also, because here we're just speculating about various drawbacks, potential disadvantages. Our connectives are really great. So the vocabulary is excellent. We have despite, additionally, thus, however, while. These are wonderful when you are introducing contrary and contradicting topics. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up this lesson. First off, with any writing prompt, you always want to read and understand the question that you have. Now, this step is really important because you'll have to understand which question you have to work with. There are these three main types of advantages and disadvantages. You might have that basic one that just asks you to list off the advantages and disadvantages. You might have the type that we had today where you have to talk about which outweighs which, and you might have the last type where you have to talk about advantages, disadvantages, and your own opinion. So make sure you really understand the prompt you have. And based off of that, you can plan your outline and make your notes. Remember, these should only take about five minutes maximum, these two steps. Then you want to understand which outline is best. And this relates to this topic right here. If you know that you have the second type where you have to talk about which outweighs which, like we did today, you'll understand which outline is best and how many paragraphs you should include. 
Then make sure as always to use varied grammar structures and vocabulary, especially your connectives to connect these contradicting arguments. And you have a 250 word minimum with 40 minutes if you've designated 20 minutes to your writing task one. So make sure you stick to this. Today we were pretty much at the limit of our word count, but just make sure you're able to get everything in without going overboard. And also think quick, get creative. This is really important, especially for this question type, because you're going to be asked to think of advantages and which one you agree with and perhaps which side is stronger. And you really have to make sure that you know what you're writing about you have to think of a thesis statement and get creative if you're not familiar with the topic. Um, take a minute to just really brainstorm and think of how you can potentially support various topics and various sides. It'll really come in your favor if you do this. Thanks a lot for joining me for this lesson. We talked a lot about potential writing prompts and ideas and I took you through the process, so I hope it was really helpful for you. I'm sure you want to continue on with your preparation, so feel free to visit us at www.bestmytest.com slash IELTS. We've got a lot of great lessons so that you are prepared for test day. Thanks, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Have a great day.